Hello, welcome to Bird's Eye View. In this series, we'll discuss everything bus related from the perspective of an industry leading school bus manufacturer. I'm Lauren Beatty, Grants Manager at Bluebird. And I'm Albert Burley, Bluebird's Executive Director of EV Business Development. In this season, we'll discuss how to electrify your school bus fleet. So, let's jump on the bus. Let's get started. In this episode, we'll be talking about cold weather operation for electric school buses. We receive a lot of questions about school bus operations in cold weather. Why is that? Absolutely right, Lauren. I'd say that's probably one of the most common questions I get from school districts who are starting to explore electric school buses. And a lot of it, honestly, is some of it's misinformation. They just assume they hear things in the industry about cold weather operation of buses. They assume there are issues. Um, But I could probably explain some of that and, and really where those concerns come from. Some of it is with charging, and there's certain strategies you need to understand if you're charging buses in really extreme cold weather conditions. Um, And some of this is about operation as well. They hear about uh, the energy it takes to um, really maintain cabin heat and to maintain battery temperatures, and there's just concern. So, yeah, that's that's one of the most common ones. And I think, again— Quick question. Yep. Can you define— extreme cold weather yeah i'd say probably if they have temps that are maybe 20 degrees on average during the winter months okay on uh, those folks like you know here in georgia where, where we are mm-hmm. if it gets in the 40s and so you know that's cold to us but that's not extreme it feels and, like 20 yeah and it feels <laughs> like 20 good point but yeah that's not what we're talking about we're talking about buses running in quebec or and you know uh, places like uh, Wisconsin and Minnesota, where they're dealing with, you know, sub-zero or at least averages in the 10s and 20s. That's kind of cold weather that people have a little bit of concern about Will the buses operate in those conditions. Okay, thank you. Um, can you talk a little bit about the technology that are that's on the buses to help with cold weather operation? Yep, one of the major components on an EV bus is called a thermal management system, and that really is the component that allows these buses to work really well mm-hmm. in cold weather. So that's what we try to explain to customers that, yeah, we've considered that. We know these buses are going to be running all over the U.S. and in Canada. We have quite a few of them right now, so we do know how they operate. But the thermal management system really has two jobs. One is to maintain the battery temperature of the propulsion batteries because they like to stay at a certain temperature. Just like your body likes to stay Mm -hmm. at a certain temperature, so do batteries. Around 70 to 80 degrees is really when they're their most optimal and they can be the most efficient. So you have to have something on the bus to warm those batteries when it is really cold. And that's one of the things the thermal management system does. It has an electric heater. Mm -hmm. Um, It's heated by the battery power and it heats up a coolant and it runs it through the batteries to take them up to temperature around that 70 to 80 degrees. And it does it very, very well. But it also does a second thing. It actually um, warms the coolant to send it through the cabin heaters to provide cabin for the passengers. So it does, it warms the batteries and it warms the cabin, and that's the entire function of the thermal management system. And it does work extremely well. Buses couldn't operate in those conditions without it. Okay. Um, What about um, preconditioning? We have a a large deployment in Boston, and I've heard um, talk about preconditioning and how that is so imperative to their successful deployment. Yep. Preconditions is something we talk about with customers quite a bit in those climates. It's really a good strategy to help kind of uh, um, preserve some of that battery energy. And what preconditioning is, is basically warming the bus cabin while it's still plugged in to the charger. Because what you want to do is the driver comes in in the morning, they're doing their pre-trip inspection like they always do. They can turn the bus on, turn the cabin heaters on, and basically get up to temperature while it's still plugged into the charger. That way, when they unplug it and leave for the day, the bus is completely charged and the bat and the cabin is completely warm and so they don't have to use as much power to get it back up to temperature. Mm-hmm. So it's really all about preserving battery power, preserving range, and preconditioning is uh, really a strategy we talk to customers that really live in those kind of climates. Is there anything else um, outside of preconditioning that helps with a successful deployment? Yeah, actually quite a few things. It's uh, We talk a lot about charging. Mm-hmm. So That's an area a lot of customers don't really understand charging, especially in cold weather climates. Um, For example, um, if it's really cold out and you're trying to get that battery temperature up, 
Um, batteries have to get to about 40 degrees before they start to take a charge. And that's true for all lithium ion batteries. Mm -hmm. That's really every, everybody's using the same type of battery, same chemistry in their school buses. And they have to get to that temperature to start to take a charge. So when you plug it into your charger, you have to basically have enough power going into the batteries to warm them up. But then you also need power to actually charge the battery. Mm -hmm. And so in some markets, we say, well, level two may not be the best charging solution. Doesn't have, it's more of a slow charge, doesn't have quite as much power. So we often recommend they use DC fast chargers in cold weather climates. It allows it to warm the battery, but also have a lot more power so it can charge the, um, the battery at the same time. So we talk about those strategies. We want to make sure the bus is doing what was intended, was basically be fully charged and ready for the day when the bus driver arrives. And in many cases, a DC fast charger is the best way to accomplish that. So 40 is the magic number. 40 is the magic number. And the interesting thing is when people say, well, what if it gets below zero? Will they still operate? Actually, electric buses will operate all the way down to negative 40. Wow. <laughs> now, I think in most cases, school districts are probably going to close anyway. Mm -hmm. If it gets negative 40 below, uh, the bus, you know, the battery won't mm -hmm. when I take a charge. The battery won't operate. The, it, just, it just won't in those conditions. Uh, but generally, that's not the case for the majority of the customers. I don't think... Mm -hmm. You or, I, you or I ever felt what the negative 40 feels like and no. hope we never do. I hope I never do no, either. Exactly. <laughs> so what about um, mountainous terrain? Um, we talked about Boston, but what about over on the West Coast? Yeah, so we have buses running in uh, markets like Colorado, mm -hmm. uh, a good example where they have a lot of mountainous terrains that deal with a lot of snow. People wonder how do those buses operate in those conditions. Well, we have a lot of feedback from mm -hmm. drivers and transportation directors running in those conditions, and they'll tell you their best snow bus is the electric school bus. Mm -hmm. You kind of wonder well, why that is, right? right? So why is it so much better than their diesel buses? Uh, a few different reasons. One, they have a lot of power. So when the bus, you know, when the snow builds up and they have these snow drifts, um, these things can power through really easily because of all that additional power. And also, they're heavier, right? Okay. So you have a little bit more weight on an electric school bus than you do a diesel bus. So you have a lower center of gravity, more weight, better traction. So they pull through the snow mm -hmm. better than a diesel bus. And that power I spoke about when you're going up, you know, some of these mm -hmm. passes, these long passes over the Rocky Mountains, more power to get up over, mm -hmm. the, over those passes. So drivers love, love them mm -hmm. for that reason. They say really that's their preferred product when they're having to deal with those snow conditions in places like Colorado. I'm thankful I don't have to drive in those conditions, but I'm glad that there are people uh, who are willing and able. Um, so if we're talking, we are talking about extreme weather, what about on the opposite end of the spectrum um, with extremely hot temperatures? Yeah, good question. You know, that not a, a big an issue for folks, um, but we do have buses in really high climates like Arizona and Southern mm -hmm. California. And we're talking temperatures like it gets up to 120 degrees. You know, like they say, it's that dry heat, right. but it's still hot. And so that's important to how do these buses operate in those conditions? Well, the thermal management system I mentioned earlier mm -hmm. also has um, what they call a chiller in that component. So if it gets too hot and the batteries start to warm up, it actually chills that coolant, runs it through the battery, brings temperatures back down to that preferred 70 mm -hmm. to 80 degrees. And mm -hmm. again, they work great in those conditions. It, it, we basically have thought through any kind of condition these buses could operate in. And that component on that bus is key to make sure that they can do their function mm -hmm. and get kids to school every day comfortably and safely. And so how many states um, do we have an EVN now? I think we're up to 36 states okay. and actually four Canadian provinces. So we even have uh, one bus currently in Hawaii. It's kind of cool. Yes, we could go there to visit. <laughs> we should. I think they need a visit to go see how those are doing. Uh, we have quite a few in Canada, too, mainly in Quebec. But we have okay. some in British Columbia and Ontario and uh, Alberta as well. So, yeah, from, you know, West Coast all the way to the East mm -hmm. Coast, we have nearly every uh, state covered mm -hmm. now. And with some of the, you know, EPA school bus funding, uh, I expect that we're going to have all 50 states here covered with EV buses before too long. So pretty exciting stuff. It's very exciting. Yeah. Anything else that you'd want to add for our customers? No, I'd say um, as they you know, continue to have questions about any kind of weather-related concerns they might have or special conditions in their markets, please reach out to us. We uh, likely have experience in similar conditions that they're going to be running these buses. We can even put them in touch 
with transportation directors running buses in those similar type markets mm -hmm. and really kind of ease their mind that, yes, these things are going to work mm -hmm. as intended. They're a great product in almost every situation. So uh, let us know, and we're here to help. Okay. That's all the time we have for today. And that's our bird's eye view on cold weather operations. <laughs>